Trying to load machines by hand is all very well, and you have a few choices. You can control left click drag across them, in which case you put a stack into each one until you run out. You can control and right click drag across them, in which case you put half a stack in each, again until you get down to less than a stack, when you then put half, then a quarter, an eighth, and so on into them. Or you can hover over the machine and press Z to drop a single item in. These methods do work, and often when you're loading up assembly machines, you want to dump as much stuff into them as you can, but if you're trying to set up a small pillbox to defend against the biters, you might want to put about 10 magazines in each turret so that they can defend themselves, but they don't waste a ton of resources if they get destroyed. You also might not have enough ammo on you to put a full stack or even half a stack into each turret, so you end up with 100 in the first, 50 in the second, 25 in the third, but that's not ideal. So, today we're going to take a look at the Even Distribution mod, which gives you a lot more control and sanity over how you empty your inventory. Welcome to Lawrence Plays Factorio. At its simplest and on default settings, Even Distribution watches for you doing a click and drag over some machines and will divide your inventory evenly between them. So, if you've got 200 magazines and 10 turrets, it will put 20 magazines in each. Note that you have to start dragging before the first turret. If you start your drag on the first turret, it will dump a full stack in there before even distribution kicks in. Loading machines like this is the main point of the mod, and if this was all it did, it would be very handy. But there's more. If you're anything like me, you end up with all kinds of random junk in your inventory, from picking up machines and belts as you rebuild things, grabbing stuff to pocket craft with, and, and, and so on. In vanilla it's not so bad, but in some of the mod packs there are so many different intermediates that even if you've just got a few of each you'll quickly run out of pocket space. With even distribution you can press shift C and your inventory will automatically be loaded into any machine nearby which can take those items. This means you can run along your bus hammering shift C and very quickly get rid of all of the intermediates you don't want. These defaults are very powerful, however the mod is also extremely configurable, allowing you to tweak lots of elements of these features. Let's take a look at the options. The even distribution settings are available from the inventory screen. Click this blue arrow in the top corner to display them. The first thing to note here isn't actually one of the settings. If you have a minimum quantity set in your personal logistics requests, you'll still put all of the resources into machines if you control click and drag across them, but if you use inventory cleanup with shift C, then it will ensure that you're always left with the minimum amount of the resource that you're set to request from the logistics network. Shift C is intended for cleaning up your inventory, getting rid of stuff you don't want, not as a way of filling machines up. Note that if you want to put ammo into turrets, there is a bug in version 1010 which requires you to have a logistics request for more than zero ammo as a minimum. Without this, the turrets will be left unloaded. Now let's take a look at the options. The first one allows you to choose whether you evenly distribute items, that is, divide the stuff in your inventory evenly between the machines, or whether you balance out the inventories, that is, make sure that every machine has the same quantity of items. Note that for the latter to work, you do need to have some of the resource in your inventory. It won't just balance absolutely everything in every machine that's within reach. The two sliders in this section allow you to limit the fuel or ammo that's put into machines, making it much easier to manage your supply of coal in the early burner phases of the game, and to make sure you don't put excessive amounts of ammo into turrets. These numbers can be set as fractions of a stack, or as a specific number of items, or in the case of fuel, as a number of megajoules. A stack of coal is 200 megajoules, and a stack of rocket fuel is 1000 megajoules, or 1 gigajoule. The second section is all about distributing items, and firstly allows you to turn this feature on or off. Next, you can choose whether to distribute items from hand, player inventory, or vehicle inventory. Perhaps you want to distribute the stack in your hand among the machines you're dragging over, rather than emptying your inventory. Or perhaps you want to load machines up from your car's storage, but keep some stuff in your pockets for crafting. Personally, I just leave these all selected all the time, but you can tweak the options if you want. Next, you can choose whether the fuel and ammo limits apply when distributing. Personally, I always want them to, as this is often the way I load my turrets, but you could have distribute fill the turrets completely, and inventory cleanup just do up to a specific number. Again, it's up to you. Finally, you can have it automatically upgrade the contents of the machines you drag over. As the tip says, it will put in better fuel or ammo if you have it available. Distribution is pretty simple. You're directly telling it which machines to affect by dragging over them, so there aren't too many options here. Inventory cleanup in the third section is a little more complicated. 
I said earlier that the mod will use any supplies in your inventory that are greater than the minimum amount set in the personal logistics section. This is true by default, however if you untick this box then it will only use anything that's greater than the maximum. In this case, if an item type isn't specified in the personal logistics settings, the maximum will be assumed to be zero by the mod, but infinite by the logistics bots, so it's not completely useless. Once again, you can choose to use the fuel and ammo limits from above. Personally, I think I'd switch off the fuel limit, because if I'm using inventory cleanup, I want to empty as much stuff out of my inventory as I can, but again, it's up to you. Drop items to chests and machine outputs are interesting options, because they're slightly unexpected. If chests is selected, it will try to match inventory items with items already in the chests and if it finds a match, will dump those items in there. This is quite nice for unloading your inventory into red logistics chests to put them back into circulation. Similarly, machine outputs will also unload your inventory into the output slot of machines rather than just into the input, again allowing you to get rid of stuff which would normally require you to open up the machine and manually insert it into the output slot. This option is great if your machines are just downloading onto belts because you can't inventory clean up onto belts. The last section in the list, the advanced options, allows you to set the delay between dragging over the last machine in a group and the items actually being inserted. I would normally say to set this fairly high to ensure that you don't accidentally drop the items in before you're ready, but since this applies whether or not you release the mouse button, it has to be fairly low to make the system feel responsive. I don't know why it doesn't just trigger on mouse button release, uh, perhaps there's a game engine limitation in there. You can also set the range that the inventory cleanup works over. It claims that this is a maximum, and if player's reach is lower, that will be respected. However, after doing some testing with long reach, I can confirm that it will still work, even on machines you can't actually reach. At the very bottom of the list, we have a very useful option. This allows you to set specific machine types which will be ignored. Perhaps you're carefully controlling loading nuclear fuel, or you're playing a mod which can void supplies. If you click on the box and select a reactor or a crusher, they will be ignored in the future. If you do add a building, you'll get another square to allow you to blacklist additional building types, so you can configure as many in here as you want. This isn't an option I use very often, but it's very nice to notice it's there. In the game settings, there are three options that can be used by a server admin to make sure that the mod doesn't slow the game down too much or to deactivate either of the features if required. We haven't used these, but on a public server it might be needed. I think that covers everything I want to say about this mod. Is it one you are aware of? Do you use it yourself? Are there any other must-have mods that you think I should talk about? Let me know in the comments. For now, thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe so you see my next mod showcase video. Bye bye.